Hi guys, Skypoint here. I've got uh, some more Kairos videos to show you today. This time after the the uh, balance changes to Demons of the ner of the Ruin Storm, where Bloodletters and Vanguard of Hell were uh, nerfed a little bit. Now this is pretty much the same deck as I used before. I just made a couple of changes. I took out the Vanguard of Hell which I had, and I replaced it with uh, Bioblade instead. So this is a, a new legendary card I got which gives a uh, plus one attack to and poisonous to your warlord that works pretty well for kairis both in terms of defending him against units because units can only attack him once and then they die but it also um, helps him to create warp rifts against tougher targets too the second change i made is i removed one of the cultist sorcerers and i added in a new chaos fury which i got Alright, with that, let's start taking a look at some of the great matches I had after the balance changes yesterday. For the first match, we're up against a Kalidus Assassin. So this uh, original starting hand of cards for mine was pretty much perfect. Playtog in my first turn, Chaos Furies in my second, Poxbringer after that, and then Demon Birds. So I was feeling pretty good about this. Now, Kalidus Assassin is, of course, one of the two Warlords who has the very high initiative, so they always go first. And he turned into the Hierophant and used his ability to create a troop. Fortunately, I drew Rotfly, which let me kill his troop, create a Warp Rift, and create a another Rotfly as well. So he comes along now, he... Making the right move, he is trying to take out that Warp Rift as soon as he can. Unfortunately for him, uh, I managed to get into a really good position from the start. So first of all, we're going to make a Chaos Fury and give it Flensing Talons. Then we're going to attack his troop and create another Warp Rift and another Fly. So now we're back to where I was at the end of last turn. I have a little bit less health, but I've got an even stronger board position. So he's correctly trying to just take this all down. So he's hitting the as many flies as he can. But unfortunately for him, when his troop dies, there's another fly. Alright. Okay, so what do I do now? Let's bring in Poxbringer. And I'm just going to go and attack him to start taking a lead on health. And it's going to stop him from being the Hierophant. Let's see who he turns into next. Lotara. Okay, so he has another one of those Voraxes. So I think this is probably where I say goodbye to all my flies. Yep. And I think he's going out for the Chaos Fury too. Yeah, alright. And then Lecticio, so he's running low on cards. And that helps me draw cards as well. There's a little bit of healing for me. Let's bring in the blood letters this turn, as well as dropping the plague toads. So the plague toads, of course, are going to be a very high priority target. He knows he has to try and take those out. Okay, so at the moment he puts down a underground fort, which is going to help him to swamp me with units. So watch this. Heavy hitters there, and yeah, he's going after the plague toad. So it's bye bye to my toad. Okay, six energy turn. What do we do here? So a little bit of healing for me. We're going to drop the demon brutes, give them inhuman grace so they can take out his troop immediately. And then we're going to attack with the blood bloodletter, which is going to buff my um, poxbringer, I think that is. Yep. And then I can just continue attacking him. And I think my blood letter has enough health, it should survive. He turns into Karn and then takes damage to himself. Wow, he took out my Demon Brute and took more damage to himself. Okay. Oh yeah, now this is it. It's over for him. So, I am going to attack with my... Bloodletter, which leaves him on 4 health, which would ordinarily be enough for him to survive, except I have Eternal Rivalry sitting here. And with that, I can make 2 attacks and win the match. There we go. That was a nice little match against uh, Caladus Assassin. Obviously, the mistake he had there was 
putting out a two health troop on turn one, which allowed me to get a warp rift and then all the flies and things went really wrong for him from there. Match number two sees Kyrus facing a Primarch, this time he's up against Fulgrim. Most of my cards here were late game ones, so I put them away and went for a mulligan and I did not get much better either. However, the next card I drew helped out a lot, there's a nice little Plague Toad, and then do one point of damage to Fulgrim. Usually in turn one, the Plague Toads are hard to remove unless you had Seek and Destroy already prepared. Okay, I've got no good options here. I'm going to have to swallow and accept getting uh, three points of damage on my Warlord, but at least I get a Warp Rift out of it, and there we go. So if he focuses on taking out the Warp Rift, the Toad will survive and duplicate. Nope, he didn't do that either. Okay, this is starting to look real good for me. My demons are starting to get discounted. I'm just going to bring in the Plaguebringer, Poxbringer rather, and use my ability and that's it. By not putting my Toads at risk, I should be able to get double Toads next turn. Okay, so Fulgrim is now trying to take out the Warp Rift, but he should have done that last turn. Okay, here we go. So some healing going on and let's go and attack. So I deliberately hit my own toad there before I attack so that it would die which would allow me to play this. We had to create room to play the demons because a toad normally has three health so when if, it, if it attacks the enemy warlord it would stay on the board. All right. So now he's starting to get a bit overwhelmed with troops, and he takes a dead turn to play Manifest Destiny. I have no more Warp Rifts, but that's okay. My Toads are duplicating now, and this is a problem. They're taking up all the space. So I can attack with... I can hit one of my Toads and lower its health, and then drop the Herald of Slanish, and I think that's it. I have no more room to play things. But that's fine, I am now in the lead on health, and I have a full board of troops. Witness the ecstasy of death. Six energy turn, he does probably the best move here, which is he plays Perfection's Flight to take out my demons. And he's trying to clean up the board a little, which is about to fill up again with toads. There we go. These toads are starting to inconvenience me now, <laughs> because I have no room to play things. Okay, let's drop another Rhea the Seducer. I'm hoping to bait out another Perfection's Flight from him, so when my uh, Slayer of Worlds hits the board, he doesn't have hard removal left. Let's just take advantage of the zero damage Fulgrim does to hit him with almost everything we have. I used the Herald of Slanish to give my demon a, um, a mutation to reduce its maintenance cost. And I think this is it. I have enough to kill him now, easily. Yeah, I had enough to kill him several times over. So that's a win over Fulgrim. I just had him pretty much on the defensive the whole match along. Next up, staying on the Emperor's Children theme, is a match against Saul Tarvitz. Now this was a good set of cards to start with. I felt happy with this, so I accepted it. And let's see how this one turns out. So, we start by playing Unspoiled Land, which draws us... Ooh, nice. A pair of Plague Toads. Let's drop those on the board. And that's it. I, With only 30 health, I don't like being too aggressive from the start, usually. So he's going to be playing a cheap vehicle at some point from the looks of things. So my answer to that is I want to get lots of Plague Toads on the board where I can then use Unrestricted Frenzy to buff them into being very dangerous. Unrestricted Frenzy, of course, will buff my Plague Toads by plus one attack and health. Okay, he's discounting the next card he plays, and he brings in... Oh, that's the cheap vehicle he got. Wow, look at that. Oh no, that's not good. Drilling Sight. So next he plays... Tactical Brilliance, and I can play a 4-cost unit. 
Okay, you played the three cards. You got Jubac out. I would normally kill Jubac as soon as possible, but I also have this problem of this high damage tank. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to drop Unrestricted Frenzy. And we are going to hit the tank. And unfortunately, I don't have enough to kill Jubac and create a Warp Rift this turn. That's okay, I'll fill up with more toads in a moment. Jubac will die next turn. Ignoring my toads and trying to go for me. Yeah, here we go. And now it's Toad Central begins. There we are, more toads, more toads. Alright, what do we do? We are going to clean up some room on the board first. And with that, we'll drop a Blood Letters. I, mean, I messed up there. I should have pinged the Blood Letters instead of hitting you back with my Warlord because, of course, I have no room on the board to put a Warp Rift. Old habits die hard. Anyhow, I'm starting to close up that gap on health. He's only three points ahead of me, and of course, I have the full board. Perfection's Flight, so he did the right thing to hit the Blood Letter. And of course, that kills it without it taking any damage. No troops that I can play right now. So instead, this just looks like a good chance to put Bioblade in play. Now my Warlord has three attack and is poisonous. I need some room now to play units next turn, so I'm going to attack with a bunch of my Toads, the ones which are likely to die. This should make it possible for me to play Slayer of Worlds next turn. And now that I've got a big attack lead over him, I'm going to hit him with my Warlord as well. Okay, he brings in a fast troop. He's now bringing the Toads under control. Alright, what do we do here? Can I kill him? Yes, I think I have enough to kill him right now. So first of all, Eternal Rivalry to buff my Warlord, and that's going to be all I need to do. So that was a win against Saul. You saw he took an early lead over me, but then he ended up just getting a bit overwhelmed by, again, the number of troops which the demons can get into play. They're not always strong troops, but they're just there. Before we round off, we have a match against Ferris Manus. So, uh, in this case, uh, again, I've got a good set of cards to start with over here. So, I'm going to go ahead and accept these. Informant Network is very useful as a first card often against uh, Iron Hands, just because if they drop their Terek squad, the two, two, health, two attack, three health guy who does two points of damage at the start of each turn, like that guy, you can actually use Informant Network and your Warlord together to kill him, like this. So, he has damaged my Plague Fly, but that's not gonna matter. Informant Network does one point of damage to Ferris and his boy, and then my Warlord attacks, which kills him, creates a Warp Rift, and creates a Plague Fly. Alright, let's see what comes up next. So now he's got another one of those guys. He is going after my Warp Rift, which is not a bad move. He could, I think, I, he could have, I think, forced me to kill both my Plague Flies if he did it differently. In the meantime, here's a Plague Ridden, which will bring that Plague Fly that died back to my hand. Rock Fly, rather. Then I can attack him, which gives me another Warp Rift. And another Plague Fly. Perfect. Okay, there's a stealth unit, and he destroys my first warp, uh, warp rift. Okay, more discounting of troops. What I'm going to do is put a Plague Bearer in play, and Demon Brutes. We're going to give Demon Brutes Crushing Claws, and just go ahead and keep some pressure on him. Okay, he's buffing his... Squad, and they're going after my Plaguebringer. 
and there's a front line. Unfortunately, he put his front line in the wrong spot. He put it right next to a unit with one health when I have a demon with cleave out there. So let's start taking out his things, and that gives us mutation cards. And mutation cards, of course, buff Elitel, which buffs Elitel's stats as well. There's a fresh rot fly and another mutation. And that mutation. And now I can destroy the warp rift and use the remaining energy to drop a warmonger of corn to protect my troops. So Ferris's health lead is down to four points, and of course he's got no troops, and I have too many troops. Okay, that's not a bad move by him. He takes out two of my most two of my troops and damages my most powerful unit. Unfortunately for him, I have another mutate card sitting around in my hand, which I'll use for another flensing talons, which leads to more stats. I can drop a blood letters. Hit the blood letters to buff all my units again this turn. And start hitting him very hard again. And I think it's almost going to be enough to kill him now. So after... Five turns, Ferris Manus is down to two health. The void itself sings my praise. He winnows the weak, which actually hits my strongest unit, but it's probably not enough to save him. Yep, that's it, it's over, and he quits. So that was a nice fight against Ferris Manus. With Ferris, you have to take him down quickly, otherwise, if the match goes on long enough for him to um, trigger his reckoning, he becomes almost impossible to beat. And the final match is Kairos against Kabanda. So, as a starting hand, I didn't like what I have. Even Rotfly is not good early against Kabanda, because with three attack, he'll just kill it instantly. This is not much better. Starting hand, not so good. So let's just use my energy ability to kill him, to hit him rather, so that after his first turn, he still has just a 10 point health lead over me. Oh, so much for that. He has a 12 point health lead over me. Alright, now I'm going to bring in Chaos Sorcerer and I'm hoping he's going to be forced to attack the Chaos Sorcerer directly. Oh no, he's not. He's going with Eternal Rivalry and he's going to do... Is it a ton of damage to me? Yeah, he does a ton of damage to me. Alright. So, normally I would use my ability to hit the Chaos Sorcerer and then and then attack with him to get a free demon, but I really wanted to get the Blood Letter into play as soon as possible. So there he is. And Kabanda continues to try to go after me. He's got a 14 point health lead. I've taken 15 points of damage, he's only taken 11. Alright, there's another blood, blood letter, so I'll use that to buff the f first one, and now we can hit him. This is getting better. He's down to only a 10 point lead over me again, but I'm getting a bit low on health. I've lost half my health already. Demon Brutes with Demonic Wings pop up next. Alright, now I need to take those guys out. How do I do this? I'm going to hit the Bloodthirster, which buffs them to 4 attack. Next, I'm going to drop a rock fly. I'm going to use Unrestricted Frenzy to buff my blood letters again. Attack him with the first blood letter, which gives the second one just enough attack to be able to kill his troop, which will create another rock fly. Unfortunately, as my turn ends, those useful buffs on the rock fly dissipate. Alright, and so what's Commander doing? Okay, he's continuing to try to focus me down. I only have 9 health left, he's got 16 and a tougher troop. Alright, we have got to get his troop off the board soon. So his troop is poisoned. I don't know why I attacked it like that. Oh, so a little bit pointless. Okay, he's getting worried about the board presence for some reason. He is fractured in time instead of ending this turn with me having 
only one point of health left. I don't know why he did that. He seems to have lost the initiative a fair bit. We're going to drop Elitil and use Tides of Madness to copy Elitil. And unless he can kill me, it's now checkmate. He's going to end this turn on 14, on 12 points of health and I can do that much damage to him. Hmm. Okay, he... That's going to be harder with a front line protecting him, but unfortunately... I top decked Eternal Rivalry. So my units with Unstoppable hit him. And normally I couldn't hurt him, but with Eternal Rivalry, my Warlord can act twice, which gives me just enough damage to kill him. And there we go. Game over. All right, hope you guys enjoyed that. You can still see that even after some of the nurse to blood letters, there's still a viable card to play. I haven't tried Corvax Utter Blight since the nerf yet. Honestly, I'm more interested in experimenting and seeing if I can finally make Blood Angels work or not. So anyhow, stay tuned and you'll see um, either a Corvax video or a Blood Angels video coming from me soon. All right, um, hope you guys enjoyed watching this and I'll see you next time. Bye for now, everyone.